Yo, yo, what's going on, fam? It's your boy, man. Back with another video. Oh, um, I am a little under the weather, you know. Got a little cold or something like that. So I'm asking y'all to bear with me. You know, I still got to come to y'all with this drop, you know, regardless of everything. If I forgive me for that little thing, too, it's going to be popping up, man. I got to get my computer right, man. You know what I'm saying? But, man, nevertheless, I'm coming to y'all with some, um, with some information that I think is it's very essential, you know what I'm saying, with uh, the, pro the the progression of the tribe, you know what I'm saying, the way I see certain people moving and thinking, you know what I'm saying, and how, um, you know, just the little uh, pieces that I've been able to bring to the puzzle, how they kind of fit in and how they kind of all really come back together and fold right in front of us. So I think this is a very important video for the family to watch, the ones who've been catching uh, my drop as well as others, you know what I'm saying, and, um, and you can see the tribe moving in. In this little particular direction, you know what I'm saying? So I hope this right here pieces together a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Um, so first off, what I want to do, I want to get that fair use up in now, you know what I mean? A copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act in 1976, you know what it is? You know what I'm saying? Get that in now. So, um... Right here, man, you got your brother October Scorpio. Shouts out to you, uh, big bro, um, for, for this video right here. You know what I'm saying? That the brother Lex built, though, as well as Lex, um, bringing us this information right here. And then I don't know if any of y'all know about the chief, you know, and his work and his efforts and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, and then as well as the brother, um, education center. Let us find the truth. You know what I'm saying? He bro he broke down a great lesson on the word tribe that I think would uh be um essential in, in going in conjunction with this information as well as uh, the other brothers' information, man. But um but yeah, and how he explains that um you know what I'm saying, really it's only one people that can be truly classified as a tribe dealing with tradition and uh mosaic law, right? Uh, in that covenant, that everlasting covenant. Um, so I just wanted to, um, you know what I'm saying, bring those three, um, particular videos and, and, and sets of information to the forefront, you know what I'm saying, just to, um, give y'all a little foundation, um, of what we're gonna be talking about and what we're gonna be building on today. Um, and that is, uh, this right here. This right here is the SF. Uh, 181 form, right? So, I know you've been hearing a lot of people talking about it lately. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of popping up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had to, you know, I had to, uh, take a little look at it. You know what I'm saying? See what was going on, man. You feel me? So I'm just like y'all trying to piece together this, you know, see what's, what, what's, what's the move, what's not. Now, you know what I'm saying? You know me. I'm a, I'm a soldier and a warrior at the end of the day, too. But, you know, so I would be thinking like, you know, ain't really on the paper route, you know what I'm saying, or the paper trail, like my dog tips say, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, it ain't, I mean, it's good to not, not have all your eggs in one basket, you feel what I'm saying, like told the AK and the Glock, and uh, you know what I'm saying, you feel what I'm saying, so, you know, like, I mean, just think about it like this, you know what I'm saying, if you get paperwork, or, or, or you get registered for some fire, or a firearm, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and and uh and you do the paperwork and you get certified you got your concealed license or whatnot for your firearm something happens you get in the altercation then you uh well you're put you're put in the predicament uh to where that that firearm now has to uh protect you you feel what i'm saying and therefore you use that and it defends you and your life is there prolonged you feel what i'm saying it's not you know unwise to say that that process wasn't necessary or something like that you feel what i'm saying so at the end of the day, we, we do want to give it an eye and see what's up with it. Maybe it can be, um, you know what I'm saying, something essential to our, our movement, you know what I'm saying, as a people, as a nation, and as a tribe. You feel what I'm saying? Now, you know me, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm digging in them scriptures, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see what scripture's trying to say, or, you know what I'm saying, to the best of my ability or to my knowledge and understanding. You know, I don't really know about everybody else, you know, people seem like they don't really want to be dealing with the scriptures too much they really want other information and 
history and all kind of other stuff, but at the same time, like me personally, you know what I'm saying, I got to make everything come back to these scripts to see where it fit in. So uh, that's what I want to do with this video to see how this FF181 uh, could possibly tie in the scripture. And that's what I want to do. I want to show. All right. So, uh, you know, what I'm saying? I want to get into this, man. So as you can see, uh, we got the racial category and the definition of category. Now, these definitions, I'm, I'm thinking, are the same. It's a direct federal 15 or whatever it's called, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so now we know, right, uh, just first and foremost, man, before we... Um, you know, dig into the meat. We know, man, that these folks that came, right? They came over here looking for what? The promised land, right? The holy city, right? We know they found the the the, the, the uh, holy city in the promised land when they came over here. You know what I'm saying? It's in their records. Out of their own mouth, they'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? So just keep that, that part right there in perspective. Not only did they find that, but they found you. Right, the copper colored native, right? Let's get that real fast. Alright, so check this out. Alright, you know what I'm saying? A little collage somebody put together on Google and found. You know what I'm saying? Um Alright, so all right, you see right here, right? Okay, American, right? Um this is from the eighteen twenty eight Webster's dictionary. It says a native of America originally applied to the Aboriginals. Aboriginals, you lucky I can't highlight it because you know I will. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to get into that, though. But, um, okay, the aboriginals or copper-colored races found here by Europeans but now apply to the descendants of Europeans born in America. Bob, okay, so we need to understand that right there because that, that's giving us a little bit of the hijack. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, that's going to help us in this lesson because they telling you right there that it meant one thing but now it applies to another, right? Meaning somebody that came and then disguised themselves as and then claimed or being cl a called something that they're not, you know what I'm saying, or something that was applied to somebody else originally. You feel what I'm saying? So as we can see though, the original meaning of a native of America was the aboriginals or the copper color races that were found here by the Europeans, right? So you see this copper pillar right here and see how that resembles my sister. You know what I'm saying, Lord Hill, shout out to you, sir. You know what I'm saying, you see, bro, I think that's for real. You feel me, with the war bonnet, but you see with that copper, you you know who look like copper. You know what I'm saying, you know what it is. Okay, now, so with that being said, let's read some of these uh these these uh definitions in these categories, right? So you got American Indian or Alaskan Native, you got Asian, you got Black or African American, you got Native, you got Hawaiian, or Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and then you got White, right? All right. So, um, now, we got, you know, the brothers and stuff, um, especially shout out to the chief that's teaching us about reclaiming our indigenous, um, white indigenous aboriginal status. You feel what I'm saying? So, that seems to be the move to reclaim our first class citizenship because we are what? Indigenous and native to the land, right? We all know that by now, right? You know what I'm saying? So, it ain't no point of us being second class citizens or calling ourselves something that has no standing in law, such as chattel or slave titles and names, you feel what I'm saying? But it would be wise to be classified as something, um, you know, indigenous and um, aboriginal to where you're at, in the, you know what I'm saying, the government that's occupying that land. So you got Aborig you got American uh Indian or Alaska native right here, right? And the, the the definition is a person having origins, right? In any of the original peoples of North and South America, including Central America, who maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment. Bam, okay. So now you should be able to see yourself as a American Negro. Uh, in that definition, you feel what I'm saying, especially if you're on the, whether you're on the, your tribal Indian drop, or if you're on your biblical American drop, or if you're on both, you feel what I'm saying, you should be able to see, because this is your inheritance, this is that promised land, right, you feel what I'm saying, so, we can see that right there, you know what I'm saying, um, with this definition, now, let's jump to black, 
uh, or African American, and it says a person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa. Now that's a problem, right? Because you know there is no black racial groups in Africa. There is nobody in Africa calling themselves black or being classified as black. You know they have tribal names like Ashanti. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bantu Zulu. You know what I'm saying? Mendingo, Mendinga. Stuff like that, you see what I'm saying? So that's already hijacked. You know what I'm saying? That's a bull right there that they're trying to pin you up under uh, and keep you bondage up under. You know what I'm saying? So let's jump down and read white, right? They say, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. Now, let's understand one thing. Now, we both know, we all know, shall I say, that black and white have nothing to do with skin color and you know in law and, and legal classification you know what I'm saying it is it is based on status okay now with white you're dealing with purity dealing with God right which therefore deals with rule of the land you see what I'm saying so black you you already know you're basically in opposition to all those things that I just said you know what I'm saying um so now with with that now they give us this definition of a person having origins of any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. Now we understand we as indigenous people are the original people of the planet, as well as those territories right there, because our people was over there, you know what I'm saying, as well. So um so it is very valid in my opinion, you know what I'm saying, and going along with the brothers to be classified as white. Aboriginal people, you feel what I'm saying? Because we are first class citizens of the land that we are on. Now, like I say, your boy teach is dealing with them scriptures, so I'm trying to find out how this proclamation of status change and correction got anything to do with our, our biblical history, story, path, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, however. But I feel like this is where it all kind of kind of coming together because you know your boy teach been doing what he been on that cedar drop if any of y'all been rocking with me for real for real and been getting that cedar drop and been paying attention man you know what i'm saying i feel like this is really gonna hit home and it's really gonna you know what i'm saying open your mind up to some things and you're really gonna get the drop you know what i'm saying i don't know if you know i don't really know if people really been getting the cedar drop like that but man for those of you who have, man, I hope this video be a jewel, you know what I'm saying, to you and in the progression of your uh of your movement and to being an indigenous person. You see what I'm saying? So like I say, man, let's go uh let's go to them scriptures, man. Let's get to digging it and let's see what's up. Alright, y'all. So uh I wanna come over here to Isaiah chapter sixty one and um I'm gonna start at verse one, read verse one through three. And I want y'all to, um, you know, pay attention to the language and, um, you know, just, just, just be very attentive and, uh, and rock with your boy and, um, and understand what's being said. Um, it says, okay, so starting at verse one, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek, right? All right. He says, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Okay. To proclaim liberty. Okay, now look at the language. You know what I'm saying? To proclaim liberty. Liberty. Okay, liberty. The state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. Independence. Freedom. Sovereignty. Self-government. Self rule, self determination, okay, the power or scope to act as one pleases, okay, freedom, independence, right? Okay, so to start over, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me uh, because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek, okay? He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, right, to proclaim freedom. Uh, sovereignty, you know what I'm saying? Um, to the captives, to those who are in bondage, to those who don't have these things. You see what I'm saying? To those who don't have liberty. Alright? Excuse me. It's saying, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Alright? So bound. 
okay? Beat that. Y'all know what it is, okay? It says to, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort, to comfort all that mourn, okay? All right, so check this out. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. All right, now this is the drop, right? That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Okay? So now, this is real, you feel what I'm saying? Because when it's talking about, you know what I'm saying, uh, the boy bearing this news, right, of, of the proclamation of liberty, you know what I'm saying, uh, for those that are, are bound and captive, right? And, um, let me get this crap out of the way. All right, you know what I'm saying? For those that are bound and captive, right? They're reclaiming their liberty and their freedom, right? And that in this process, right, it says that they may be called something, right? So this is, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's this. So it says they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now, so you all know what your boy been known. You know what I'm saying? So by now, we should know what the trees of righteousness are, the planting of the Lord. But if not, let's go ahead and go through it. You feel what I'm saying? So what's... Okay, so um, we were just in Isaiah chapter uh, 61. If you go one chapter back to 60, uh, verse 21 says, Thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. Okay? Fine. Right? The branch of my planting, right, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified, right, just as it said in the, um, uh, in the, in the verse in the, uh, in the next chapter that they may be called trees of righteousness, you know what I'm saying, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, okay, but now for those of you who know, you know what I'm saying, your boy always beating in your head, cedar, 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 you know what I'm saying, just trying to show you our connection to this tree, because you must understand why we are called cedars of Lebanon. You know what I'm saying? These trees of righteousness. You got to understand why your connection to this tree and what that truly means. And I hope by watching this video, this video you know what I'm saying, that you can do that. So uh, so when we go to uh, Psalms, right, chapter chapter 1, we read what? The way of the righteous and the wicked. It says, Starting in verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner. Okay, so we got some particular language we can look at. Okay. Nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth at the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay, there's some more language we can look at. Alright. It's in the law of the Lord. And his law right does he meditate day and night okay and say and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bring forth his fruit in his season his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth he doeth shall prosper right so okay now this right here tell you that a righteous man is like what he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of the water and shall bring forth his fruit in season and his leaves shall not wither all right, so we we going over here to uh the numbers chapter twenty four. We're gonna be hitting some of the same precepts, you know. I've been hitting them in other videos, but I think they're very uh very important right now at this time. So as you can see, we should go where uh you know Balaam was looking to curse um the children of Israel, but instead blessed them, right? So at, at verse uh five it say, "How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel, as the valleys are spread forth as the gardens of God." By the river's side, right? So check that out. As gardens by the river's side, right? Okay. As the trees of line aloes which the Lord has planted and as cedar trees beside the waters, right? So we know that the, the trees that are beside the, the water that, um, that the Lord has planted are referring to these cedar trees, right? So when we see, um, your boy David in Psalms 1 refer a righteous man 
to a tree planted by the rivers of the water, we know that's talking about what? The cedar trees, right? Because we can also go uh, to chapter 92. We can go to chapter 92 and go down to verse 5, uh, let's see, 12. He say, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, right? So the righteous shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Okay, bam. So that's the drop right there. You know what I'm saying? Now check out what it says. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Mm. In the courts. Yeah, that's crazy. Of our God. Okay, so, but we know that the, they say that uh, those that be planted are who? The righteous, what? That grow like what? Cedars in Lebanon, right? Excuse me, family. Okay. Okay, just to, just to show you that the, 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 the planting of the Lord, or those that be planted, are referring to the cedars of Lebanon. All you got to do is go a couple of more chapters. Psalm 104. And, 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 and our great King David was, is telling us what? Verse 16. <clears throat> the trees of the Lord are full of sap. Right? Okay. The cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted. <laughs> okay. You can see. That the planting of the Lord refers to these cedars of Lebanon. And these cedars of Lebanon, the planting of the Lord, refer to the righteous, right? Well, we can see, you know what I'm saying, how the Most High is <clears throat> making this connection uh, between us, the righteous, right? His righteous chosen or his righteous people, you know what I'm saying? And these trees, these cedars of Lebanon. Now, it's very important to why he's making a reference to us in these trees, right? Now, when you understand tree, now, we all know what a tree is, right? We all know a tree is something. It is what? It's connected to the earth. It's coming out of the ground, right? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Some etymology on it. But it just give us, you know, some wood and some tree stuff. But we know one thing, right? That we, that's kind of some good information right here. It says, to be firm, solid, steadfast, okay? Um, so, uh, now we know one thing, that these trees that he refers to, he also call us what? The planting of the Lord, right? Okay, so when you look at the etymology on plants, you get what? Put in the ground to grow, right? Or like he say, um, right? The righteous, right? Shall grow like a cedar in the Lebanon. Uh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, right? So, the uh, etymology of plant, you get put in the ground to grow, right? Okay, Latin plant, plant or whatever. Uh, that refers to uh, growing, to insert firmly, okay? Fine, okay, or uh, bury. Okay, so now the Most High is calling us Righteous trees, right? Righteous trees that he planted. Now we know this is important. This is important correlation, uh, for one reason, right? Now let's, let's, let's dig in on that. Okay. So the key to understanding the connection between the righteous and the trees is just simply understanding the origin of the righteous. You feel what I'm saying? So we're going to jump over to Genesis chapter two, right? The creation of man and woman. It says these are the generations of heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. It says every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. Okay. Okay. It says, but there went up from uh, a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Okay. So the mist came up and watered the whole face of the ground, right? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. 
and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And this man, and the man became a living soul, right? And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man who he formed. Okay, so blam, or planted the man who he formed in the garden, right? So right now we know what? From the ground, the most high made Adam, right? And and we can prove that just by going into the into the words, right? Going to the uh the strongest concordance. You know what I'm saying? Right, okay. They say, um and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. He, uh, Hebrew, uh, Strong's 127, H127, Adama, Adama, right? Meaning what? From soil, right? Country, earth, right? Ground, husband, right? Okay, Adama, Adama. Is a word translated as ground or earth, right? Which occurs in the biblical account of creation uh, in the book of Genesis. Okay, the etym etymological etymological link between the word Adama and the word Adam is used to reinforce the teleological link between humankind and the ground, or the original creation of the Most High from the ground, right? Uh, apparently it seems everybody don't come from the soil but uh anyways that's another story uh emphasizing both the way in which man was created to cultivate the world and how he originates from the dust of the ground right okay so we know one thing adam right we are descendants of adam we are original descendants of adam which means we are original people who did what come from the, who the most high made from the ground right he, he, uh, you know what I'm saying? He formed us from the ground, right? But remember, the most I call us what? The cedars, right? The trees for which he planted, right? The, the, the word plant, the etymology of plant is to what? It's to put in the ground to grow. Okay, so coming back to Genesis and then looking at verse 8, uh, it's saying, and the Lord God planted, right? Planted a garden eastward in Eden. Okay, so he planted the garden in Eden, and there he put the man whom he formed from the what? The ground, Adama, right? The Adama, or you could say he planted Adama, uh, who he formed from the ground in the garden, which he planted in Eden, right? Now, one thing we know from Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 8, is that what? The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Talking about this Assyrian cedar, right? It says that the cedars in the garden of God. So that's really what we want. We just we just want to know that what's in the garden of God, right? And we know that there are cedar trees in the garden of God, right? I made I made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, right, that were in the garden of God envy him. So from this story in this verse, we're gonna to touch back on this. this Understand what it's really talking about, but just for the, you know what I'm saying, for perspective purposes, I just want to show y'all that we know for a fact that cedars, you know what I'm saying, are in the garden of God. So Adam is placed in the garden of God. Adam is from the earth. He comes from the earth, right? His righteous children are referred to as cedars of the ground, right? Because they what? They're planted in the garden of God. Now, this is very important when we're understanding who we are and we're uh, uh, reclaiming or proclaiming our indigenous status as what uh, a, a person's having origins uh, in any of the original people of North and South America, including Central America, and who maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment. So, if you are claiming, if you are what original of the original peoples of North and South America, then you're a what? You're an Aborigine. Right, y'all remember the man who came and slipped down and said black people are aborigines, right? And they want to interview the man and get all this stuff, but you know what it is. You already know what time it is. But I just say that to say that we were claiming this indigenous title, and and and, and the definition of this states that you, uh, you are an aboriginal because it says that you're uh, claiming to 
be the original peoples of North and South America, right? So when we go and look up the etymology of Aboriginal, that's what we get. First, right? Earliest, existing from the beginning, right? Especially in reference to inhabitants of lands colonized by Europeans. Damn. So we know who we're talking about, okay? We know us is in the picture, <laughs> you feel what I'm saying, in our land, right? They say the first, the earliest existing from the beginning, especially in reference. Now, who was created in the beginning? Adam, right? Okay. All right, especially in reference to inhabitants of the lands colonized by Europeans from Aborigines, right? See, Aborigine, Al. The specific Australian sense is attested to the 1820. Uh, the noun meaning an original inhabitant, right? Claiming our indigenous status, we're saying that we are the original peoples, right, of the Americas, right? Thus doing what? We're claiming that we are the original inhabitant, right, in auto -tachon. So, now we used Understand what an auto talk chime is. Let's get the etymology on it. <clears throat> an auto talk chime is one sprung from the soil he inhabits. Bah! Y'all, y'all with me, right? Aborigines, native, literally means sprung up from the land itself. Bah! Right? Sprung up from the land itself because you was what? You was planted. You was put in the ground to grow. You sprang from Adam. You were a cedar in Lebanon. Right? You feel me? So, now coming back to a auto, a top chunk, a auto, a, a, excuse me, I don't even know how to say this one. A top chunk. A top chunk is one who springs from the soil he inhabits. Right? Aborigine, native, literally means to spring from the land itself. Now you see why we are trees, right? Land, earth, soil. What comes out of the land, the earth, and the soil, right? The trees, right? They bound to the earth. They bound to the land, right? So if you are a cedar in Lebanon, what is that really saying? Okay, so what is that really saying? If the Most High is telling you that the righteous shall do what? Grow like a cedar of Lebanon, right? That what? Let's get it. One hundred four sixteen. That the trees of the Lord are full of sap, right? The cedars of Lebanon, which He has planted. Okay. So if you are planted by the Lord, right, you shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You know what I'm saying? We know that you you go because what? You've been planted. You've been put into the ground to grow. Right? So you sprang up from the ground as a tree, therefore making you one who sprang from the soil he inhabited, right? An aborigine. A native literally sprung from the land itself. A what? A cedar in Lebanon. Now that's very important, right? That is referring them to a cedar in Lebanon. So we're going to go over here to the King James Strong's Concord and we're going to go to First Kings because this this is what's, what's really going to hit it home. Remember, it's, and, and this right here, it said, and he spake of the trees, right? From the cedar tree. This is First Kings chapter 4, verse 33. And he spoke, and he spake of the trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon. So we know that cedars are associated with Lebanon, right? Right, Lebanon is a place of cedars, right? So, but let's get the Hebrew stones for Lebanon, in case those of you who don't know. Okay, Strong's H3844 is what? Lebanon. Bam. Lebanon means whiteness. You feel me? Lebanon means whiteness. So, what is the Most High really telling us? So let's look at uh some etymology on white. Okay, white. So we see the first thing we get is whiteness, right? Bam. Lebanon, right? <laughs> first thing we get is Lebanon. Okay. Let's see. Okay, meaning white part of the eyeball, white man, person of a race, things by light complexion. Okay, okay. 
Let's see what else we get though. Okay, we get that. That was the noun. We get the adjective, right? Uh, uh, bright, radiant, clear. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you get the history. You get the history of the people. You know, you know. Uh, white to shine. Uh, white to shine. Light to shine. To brighten. Okay. A uh, as a uh, surname. Originally with the reference to fair hair or complexion, it is one of the oldest in English, uh, being well established before the conquest. Mm. Being well established before the conquest, meaning morally pure, was in old English. Ah. So, this is the definition of whiteness right here. Uh, more, morally pure, right? Or honorable, fair, right? So, we all know that white can be pure. Purity. We already know that. And we already know that the ones who are uh, squatting on the land and occupying it are calling themselves white to, and signif uh, to signify purity and God and rulership of the land, right? Okay, so now let's go back to Isaiah 61 and let's read that again. Let's see what the Most High is, is, is saying to us. He say the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, right, freedom, uh, self-government, sovereignty, independence, right, to the captives, to those who are in bondage, in slavery, being bound by fictitious titles, among other things. You know, I'm just supplying, but y'all know what it is, though. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound, right? So basically, he's talking about, I'm finna drop the good news on the fam. You feel what I'm saying? About a way to proclaim liberty and freedom and opening, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? The prison gates. You feel what I'm saying? To them that are bound for giving us the pathway to freedom and to proclaim it, right? He said, to proclaim the acceptance of the year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to, conf to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, right, for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. That they might be called, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, right, that he might be glorified. So what are these trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord? They are the cedars of Lebanon, right? The trees of right, the of whiteness, right? So he's saying that we must be called the trees of whiteness, right? The trees of whiteness, or the indigenous autochthons, the the Adamites of the earth, of our of our land that we sprang from, right? So it is very apparent that we must try to fix our status and proclaim white indigenous. Auto top chunk because the Bible even tells us that we are called to be what? What original <laughs> inhabitants, descendants that sprang up from the ground in whiteness and moral purity. And pure because you gotta understand what they did. They swapped the place with you. Right? They call us black, but black means bleach. Bleach me bleach is pale, right? Let's see if we got we, we, we got some some etymology on that. Black, what? Bleach, black. You know what I'm saying? To shine, to flash, burn, to burn, gleam, shine, flash, right? Bright, shining, glittering, pale, right? These are in, in, the, in the adjective. You feel what I'm saying? So, pale, right? We know a pale, uh, what does it say right here? Pale, colorless, right? That's leprosy, right? That's the true leprosy. You feel what I'm saying? Remember the cedars of God are used to cleanse leprosy. But the cedars of Lebanon was used to cleanse leprosy. But think about that, though, right? Now you got these people, right, who have came and planted themselves in the garden of God and now call themselves the morally pure divine rulers of the land. You see what I'm saying? And gave you their title, which means black, pale, or colorless, right? Because they're the ones leprosy without no color because you're not colorless if they were calling you colored for being black, right? So if they're white, they're telling you what? They were colorless. You see what I'm saying? I eat the leprosy. You feel what I'm saying? So then they calling those, they switch, you see what I'm saying? They switch the white terms. The white meaning the morally pure white, the black meaning the bleach white. You feel what I'm saying? The pale or the colorless. Okay? So now, 
now we can understand what's going on with Ezekiel was telling us what he said behold the Assyrian wow, we know that we, we've been building on that Assyrian you know what I'm saying his connection to you know those albinoids you see what I'm saying he said the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches right so bam so that's what it was telling us what that the, the, the cedars that was in the garden of God could not hide him so it was like bang so okay how you get in the garden of God? You see what I'm saying? How, how does how does Assyria become a cedar in Lebanon? Right? When we go we go some chapters up before that, Ezekiel tell us in 17, right? The parable of the two eagles in the vine. He said, "The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, a great eagle with great wings, long wings and full of feather. Now we we know what this eagle." You know what I'm saying? Correlates with, right? Or Babylonian, Assyrian, or Roman Empire, things like that. Uh, people who suppress us, basically, right? Full of, uh, full of feathers, which had diverse colors. Came unto Lebanon, right? And took the highest branch of the cedar. He cropped off the top of its young twigs and he carried it into a land of traffic. He set it in a city of merchants. Right, he took also the seed of the land and he planted it in a fruitful field. All right, placed it by the great water and set it as a willow tree. Uh, and set it as a willow tree, right? And it grew. And, um, okay, so understand what, what just happened right now, right? We got this eagle who just came into Lebanon, right? Where the cedars are at, right? Where the garden of God is, right? You know what I'm saying? And he took the highest branch of the cedar, he cropped off of it, plucked the, the young twigs, carried it, and planted that joker himself. You feel what I'm saying? Now, then you go back to Ezekiel 31, and, and, and now you see uh, this parable about Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, right? The oppressor, right? The Pharaoh, the king of bondage, right? Being a what? A cedar in Lebanon. Right, so you can see right here how this these albinoids come in and they plant themselves in your land, in the promised land. You feel what I'm saying? And then call themselves white, call themselves Lebanon. You feel what I'm saying? The the pure, the morally pure, and the rulers of the land. You feel what I'm saying? And give you their leprous um uh, uh classification of black. Or, 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 or white. You feel what I'm saying? They, they give you their leprous classification of white, which is black, which is bleach, which is pale, right? So you can see they hit you with the switch of rule. Bah, 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 bah. That's why we got to do what? We got to do what Isaiah tell us to do, man. You feel what I'm saying? Let's, 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 let's piece it together real quick. We got to do what Isaiah tell us to do, right? And proclaim liberty, right? So that we may be called, what? Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Right? We want to be called the planting of the Lord. Why? Huh? Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why we want to be called the planting of the Lord? I can tell you. You want to be called the planting of the Lord because we know what? The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like the cedars in Lebanon. Right? So we know the planting of the Lord, right? The trees of righteousness are the cedars of Lebanon. So you want to be those trees of righteousness because you want to be the righteous, right? The cedars of Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish, what? In the courts of our God, okay? So you want to be called and establish these trees of whiteness, right? These autochthons, these original inhabitants that sprang up from the soil like the trees so that you may have some rights on your own land and flourish in the courts of our God and establish your own and be set up and established so you can proclaim liberty, the state of being free within a society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views, independent freedom. Sovereign, self-government, self-rule, self-determination, right? 
how we try to be. So we can do what? We can vibrate as a tribe on our own land and be respected. And then we can move however we got to move, whether it's bounce, lead, dip, however. But this for, might be something you want to, you know what I'm saying, put in your arsenal. Especially if you're sitting over your behind doing nothing, you can at least be reclaiming your indigenous title, right? So we can be what we are called to be. Those trees of righteousness, the planet of the Lord. Shalom, family.